Now when I'm pressing up, obviously I get jump, but also when I press the paddle, I get jump. And that means instant flash kicks. I press the paddle and kick, instant flash kick. Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. I'm really excited because as you know, I love playing games on my Nintendo Switch, but let's face it, this is not a D-pad. Instead of using this official Joy-Con, I got this. This is the Hori D-pad Joy-Con. This came out way back when the Nintendo Switch came out. Well, a couple of years after the Switch came out, Hori came out with another D-pad and it's this the Split Pad Pro. Now the main thing about this Split Pad Pro is supposedly it's going to make all of the games that you play with a D-pad and an analog stick as well more comfortable because it's gonna put these buttons in a more comfortable position. Now full disclaimer, Hori did send this controller to me for the purposes of making this video, but they haven't told me that I have to say anything specific. This is totally all my own personal opinion. Let's open up the Split Pad Pro and see how this D-pad feels. So here's a good look at the box. In Japan, it's called the Grip Controller, but in the West, it's called the Split Pad Pro. One thing I didn't realize is that it also has this assign button here on the back. All right, so let's get it out of the box. Just pull it out like so, chuck the rest of the packaging instruction manual. I'll check that out in the future, but this is the unit itself. On the surface, it actually looks like that grip that you slide the Joy-Cons into when you're using it wirelessly, but don't forget, this doesn't work wirelessly. This is for being an ergonomic controller while it's plugged into the switch. So, have a good look at that. Large number of functions, but most of them are the same as what you would expect on a normal Joy-Con. You've got the D-pad, you've got the analog sticks, you've got the buttons, and you've got your two shoulder buttons. And also you have some turbo and assign functions. Here on the back, it's actually got two extra buttons that you can assign yourself, FL and FR. So removing the old D-pad Joy-Con, which I bought for like $25, $30, you can still actually get them. Wasn't expecting it to be so much higher than the Switch. I thought it was gonna be flush at the front, but it's apparently not. The controls themselves actually feel all right. Not super pro, but you know, you got your plasticky left and right buttons. So when you press these buttons here, they go directly in, but when you press these buttons here, it actually kind of rotates downward when you click it. The analog sticks are pretty typical Hori fare, as in they're, they're, they feel quite loose compared to maybe some other analog sticks you may have used. They've got, they feel like they've got a very wide range of movement. Anyway, initial impressions are pretty good, but we won't know how it actually feels to play with until we actually turn on some games. So let's load up some puzzle games, let's load up some fighting games, and let's see how this ergonomic D-pad feels on the Split Pad Pro by Hori. All right, I've spent about 15, 20 minutes with this controller now, and I've got to say, it is basically exactly what you might expect. It does feel like it's a little bit ergonomic because it's got this rounded grip on the back, so your hand kind of feels nice to hold it. You've got the controls in all the right places, and I can say that it does feel nicer to have your thumb, instead of being bent over like this position, in this controller, on this controller, you can just go over here and you can see it's like equidistant from your palm to make it much nicer to use. Let's talk about the buttons first. They feel good, but not sort of high performance. You know, if you're just casually playing Street Fighter on your Switch, this totally gets the job done. But it's just not the controller that I would choose to like bring to a tournament. That said, I only play fighting games on a D-pad and a control pad like this when I don't have an arcade stick or when I'm just feeling lazy in front of the couch. So the face buttons are nice, but basically average feeling for what you'd expect of membrane buttons. These buttons on the shoulders, again, they're not super high performance, but they're exactly what you would expect from other Hori controllers that I've tried. So the plus, the minus, the screenshot button, and the home button, and the assign and turbo buttons are all made of rubber. They're kind of, it's like rubber buttons. You're not gonna be pressing them often, but when you're in training mode, when you like want to use it to reset the stage or something, you're gonna be pressing it quite a lot, actually. It feels kind of as gross as this rubber button felt on the on the original Hori Pad D-Con. The minus button on the Hori D-Pad Joy-Con, I've never been a fan of this. But the nice thing on this Split Pad Pro is that they're much bigger. They're not like minus shaped and plus shaped. You've got an actual circular button here, and an actual circular button here, so I like that. And before I get to the D-Pad, which is probably the most significant area of scrutiny for me with all of these controller products, is if you turn the whole Nintendo Switch over, you see you've got these extra function buttons over here. You've got FR and F. L. A lot of controllers that are aiming themselves at the pro segment or the competitive segment are using these things like back buttons. Your ring finger and your pinky, they're not being used, they're being underutilized. So for pro gaming, like taking advantage of all the fingers on your, on your hand, one way of doing that was to put extra buttons on the back. Now using the assign feature is really, really simple. All you do is hold down the assign button and the button you want to assign. So holding down assign and 
light punch, for example. And you'll see the assign, actually the lamp goes red. And that means that when I press this button on the back, you'll see I get all these punches we will do punches over here. Because these two are not linked, I cannot have like YXBA be assigned to the, the paddle on the left split pad pro con. So this thing actually over here, this button on the back can only be assigned to D-pad motions or the left stick click or these shoulder buttons, the L and ZL buttons. So if you were hoping to do some cool shortcuts where you have like, you know, directions on the left side, but also some directions on the right side for some easy flash kicks, it probably won't work in exactly the way that the newer Hori controllers do, but you can do something similar by using like holding left down here and pressing right on the shortcut key. I'll show you that right now. All right, so I've got this character, Charlie. He's a classic from the Alpha series, but one of the things about him is he is a charge move character. So instead of doing like a dragon, a fireball like this, I actually hold down for a couple seconds, press forward and I get a sonic boom out. But something that you couldn't, you can sort of start to cheat with in the newer games is you could actually be holding back and then press forward with a separate button to get a dragon, a, a sonic boom out really, really quickly. So I'll just show you how that works. If I hold down the assign button and I press left over here, that means that every time I press left, obviously I get left, but also now if I press the paddle on the back, I also get left. I can be holding back like this and then I can press the paddle and I get a sonic boom out super quickly. So, and I go straight back to charging with my thumb because I never move my thumb. And so in a way, you're maximizing on the amount of frames of time that you have for charging the move, but also it just makes the move easier to do. If you're doing it while crouching, it does still register as you're pressing down. So unfortunately you'll have to stand up. Even, you can, I mean, you can do it while holding back, but you need to stand up while holding back in order to get the Sonic Boom to come out. So sort of a nice little cheat that you can do on this version of the game, but unfortunately this is a really old game. Street Fighter Alpha 3 came out decades ago. So in fact, you can't actually do it the opposite way. You would think I'd be able to hold back with my thumb and then press right like this with my paddle. But unfortunately it doesn't work in this game. This Sonic Boom trick only works on the right side of the screen because if I'm holding down left and I press the paddle and punch, you can see nothing happens except for the punch. I don't get the actual direction pad in my input history. But if I do this with a sign and up, now, then, now, now when I'm pressing up, obviously I get jump, but also when I press the paddle, I get jump. And that means instant flash kicks. So if I do this on the left side, I'm charging like this and then I do the paddle and the kick button, flash kick without ever moving my thumb. But the thing about this is it does work on both sides. And the reason it works on both sides is because the game doesn't care what side you're on. Up will always override down. So if I'm holding down back or even on the right side, I press the paddle and kick, instant flash kick. So yeah, there are other things that I'm sure you can come up with, but that seems to be what works in Street Fighter Alpha 3. All right, next to the assign button, you can see there's a turbo button. And quite honestly, I never really find much use for the turbo button unless you're like, testing out certain combos and you want to know absolutely the fastest possible input. Hold down turbo, press the button that you want to be turbo and you can see the light comes on and then when I press the button after that, I get turbo button after that instead. If I press turbo and the button again, then it just goes into hold mode and then just the character is just stuck doing that input. You can actually hold down the turbo and press up and down on here to change the speed of the turbo. So if I press down, I'll get a slower turbo like this. And then if I press turbo up, I get faster turbos. Generally speaking, fighting gamers don't have much use for this button and I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to use it in a tournament anyway. All right, now it's come to the moment I'm most interested in and it's the D-pad on this controller. Like I mentioned earlier, it does feel nice to hold this in your hand. Uh, the, I, my one, one of my gripes is that it, it doesn't feel pro, it just feels nice. Like it's nicer than holding, okay, if you're holding your joy, sorry, that's not a joy-con, what? If you're holding the joy-cons on your Switch like this, it's just like your hands are really cra cramped. You're just kind of trying to find places to put your fingers. But on this controller, it does have a nice grip and it means that your thumb is an actual good distance away from the palm grip. Otherwise, instead of like on here, you'd be like, if you actually had the controller on your palm, you'd have your, your thumb bent over like this to use it. But if you have this, you can have it nicely resting on your palm and then your thumb comes at a fairly good distance. Obviously, it depends on the size of your hands. And although personally, I would much prefer if the D-pad were up here and the analog stick were down here, it does kind of fix the problem because again, the distance is better from palm to D-pad. Now, when it comes to the quality of the D-pad itself, it's basically what you would expect from the Hori D-pad Joy-Con, but it is a little bit larger. And so I find 
that in in general with this character like Ryu, I don't have any issues with like missed inputs. I do this and I get all three inputs for the fireball. If I do the super, all six inputs come out for that. Super for the fireball. I think it will take me a little time to get used to it, however, because it is, I feel like I'm moving my thumb, I think it's like two or three millimeters, but it is ever so slightly further than I'm used to compared to the original Hoi Pad Joy, Do Doi Pad? D Pad Joy-Con. All right, so just basic, simple stuff. So it's not super fast and super responsive, but it does do the job. And when you press the buttons, they come out and they come out very reliably, which is something that can't be said for most of the other makers out there. I've, I've tried loads and loads of D-pads and it's just like unable to do one very simple thing, which is not being able to press all of the inputs at the same time. But fortunately, this is like the D-pad from the Hori pad, like the Hori D-pad Joy-Con. You can't press left and right at the same time, that, which means that when I'm already pressing down on the D-pad, I can rock back and forth and I will get either input. It'll switch from left to right, left to right. There are other controllers where like once you've put your thumb down on the pad, if you rock over to right, nothing will come out because like the D-pad's stuck in like actuated mode. All right, one character I've got to try when I'm testing out a D-pad is Zangief. How easy is it to do the spinning pile driver, which is the move where you actually rotate your thumb around the D-pad in a 360 motion, but generally speaking, 270 degrees is usually enough. So I'll try that now. And absolutely no problem. He actually doesn't need to have all the buttons come out. All the cardinal directions have to come out, but if you miss a diagonal, like it'll still work. So that, that spinning pile just, driver just worked. Let's just double check the inputs here. It says that I had a forward, down, forward, down, and then it skipped back, down, back, and then it skipped up, back. And then that's just because of the speed and the way that I was pressing the D-pad. Now, if you're very, very intentionally pressing all the diagonals, you can get it to work, but it's a little bit harder. So let's see if I can do that now. Let's see how many of the inputs came in that time. So that time I only missed one direction. It was one of the diagonals. But again, as you can see for characters like this, you don't have to get all the diagonals. It still comes out. So I'll just try it with the original Hoi D-pad. I find that I had basically the same performance. I'm going to intentionally press all the directions and try to get all of the directions, including the, uh, the diagonal to actuate. All right, let's see, how many of the directions did I get that time? Forward, down, forward, down, down, back, back, up, back, up. Okay, well, that's interesting. I mean, it's only one test out of a million, but with the Hori D-pad Joy-Con, I was able to get all the diagonals to actuate. So I'm just gonna double check again, see if I can get, with the Split Pad Pro, can I get all the actions to, act, all the directions to actuate? Forward, down, forward, down, down, back, back, up, back, up. Ooh, whew, okay. Thank goodness. So first try, I actually got it. So that's definitely something I'll be testing when I try out controllers in the future. I feel like that's something I wasn't as meticulous as I could have been about. The controller itself is not skipping directions as like a fault or anything. That's important. All right, just want to test out another character in another game. This is Undernight Inbirth. Let's see how the, the D-pad feels to play. Hmm, okay. Basically, the buttons feel fine. You know, they press when you want them to, they come up when they, when you want them to, and the D-pad feels basically everything what you might expect from the D-pad Joy-Con, but it does feel a little bit bigger. And I think that's actually kind of nice. It makes it a little bit easier to intentionally press only this cardinal direction when you want it, or only a direct diagonal when you want it. What I found when I was doing this combo, however, is that I'm, I'm, I, it's not as ergonomic as it could be. 99 or 98% of people who buy this controller are gonna be absolutely fine. But I just found like this, this looks like an ergonomic shape, but it's, it's actually not, it's actually not that ergonomic. I just feel like, can you see this? I feel like I'm crushing my, my pinky with my, my ring finger here. And the reason that it doesn't feel quite as nice as it could be is that on a normal pad controller, your, your fingers can actually wrap around the pad. One important thing is that your hands are closer together. When you're playing with the Split Pad Pro, like your hands were far away when you were playing with the normal Joy-Cons, now they're even further and you do you do feel like your arms are coming out like this. And I, I feel like I definitely wouldn't want to be using this on a train. I, th I think you could, but in Japan people would probably look at you like, seriously, could you hold a console that's a little bit smaller and just play games on your phone, man? Because it is like ergonomic-ish, but it's not actually its own kind of handle. 
it, it, your hands do end up getting squished in this zone over here. It may seem like I'm nitpicking a little bit too much, but that's I think that's the point of these videos. I think everyone is going to look at this product and go, oh wow, it's amazing. It's got a, a nicer D-pad than the Joy-Con. If you're a fighting gamer, I feel like it helps to be meticulous about these things. I feel like if you're gonna go all the way and make a, a, a split pad pro, you're gonna put pro in the title and make it $50, I don't know, I think for a second revision of this product, I think it could help to make it, you know, a little bit even more split off with an actual kind of pole for the for the handle. Just a suggestion for the future, Hori. But if the question is, does it feel nicer than having this D-pad Joy-Con over here or just, you know, the standard Joy-Con like this? Yes, a million times. It's like 10 trillion times nicer than this. Like The only real way to use this D-pad Joy-Con is to hold your hand, not like this, but to hold it away from the pad like this so that you've actually got your, your thumb in a good position to like get all the inputs out. This is important stuff. When you're, when you're playing a fighting game. All right, it's been a million years since the last time I played Cross Tag Battle, so I still only really know the one combo, but let's see if I can remember how it goes. All right. So in learning to do that combo, here's a few opinions, opinions, opinions that I have on the on the D-pad here. You know, I'm actually, I actually really, I, I'm liking it more and more the more that I'm using it. Again, it is not leagues different to the Hori D-pad Joy-Con, but just being able to hold this in a more convenient, like in a more comfortable way does make a big difference to the usability of this pad. And it does feel quite different being maybe two millimeters or three millimeters bigger. It feels like it's about this big and on here, I feel like it's not quite as big. But really what I was scrutinizing the most when I was using the D-pad is in this combo, there's a bit where she does what's called a super jump cancel. That's not a difficult thing to do, but on a lesser D-pad, it can be a little bit inconsistent. You have to press down before you jump. And if you press down before you jump, you get a super jump like so. So I can do like a, 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 a neutral super jump or a back super jump or a forward super jump and being able to do the right super jump you want when you want to do it and on, you know, with, with accuracy as well. That can really make a controller feel nice to play with. It comes out nice and consistently and I, I didn't feel frustrated like, oh, I actually did a, a neutral jump instead of doing a super forward jump or a super back jump. All right, and let's face it, the only real reason you want a D-pad for your Nintendo Switch is so that you can play Puyo Puyo or Tetris, or Puyo Puyo Tetris, or Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. Oh yeah, you definitely don't want to be playing this game on an analog stick. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, Oh no! Seven! Oh! Seven! I'm probably the master of Puyo Puyo. I'm just joking. Okay, I, I'm, I really suck at this game, but I do really enjoy playing puzzle games. And you certainly, this is one of those games that if you're really passionate about playing this, or, or you probably find that on your Nintendo Switch, you don't really play all the other games. You're like, I bought like 10 games, but I only really play this one puzzle game, Tetris or, or Puyo Puyo. It is so much nicer to play on a D-pad. All right, well, ladies and gentle beans, I hope you've enjoyed this quick test of the Hori Split Pad Pro. Obviously, there are some major advantages and reasons why you'd want to buy this. And I think that 98% of people who buy this are gonna be totally satisfied with their purchase, mainly because playing on the Nintendo Switch, I've, I've actually said this right when the console came out, this just sucks to hold. It just, it, it's actually one of my least favorite, most unergonomically friendly consoles ever. But finally, you can get rid of the Joy-Cons, throw them away, and you can attach these. Unfortunately, they don't work wirelessly, but if you are playing handheld like this, and many of you probably are because other people are hogging the television and you've got to sit on your bed playing your games with your Nintendo Switch, I think it feels really quite nice. There are things that I think that Hori just couldn't escape though. I mean, first of all, <laughs> This is really wide now. Personally, I feel like my arms come in quite naturally like this, and I wanna be holding my controllers two or three inches apart. But when your hands are as far away, as far apart like this with the Nintendo Switch, with the Split Pad Pro, or just even just the normal Joy-Cons on the Nintendo Switch, you're like a mile away between your, your arms, your hands. And like, if you rest your hands on your, on your 
hips when you play, then actually your arms are kind of coming outward like this, just to hold the hold the controller. So you're kind of you're kind of doing this with your hot hands. But if you're just playing at home, I think it feels significantly nicer than playing with the original Joy Cons. And believe it or not, it is a slight upgrade on the original Hoi D-pad Joy Con, the the D-pad. Obviously, it's ergonomic and it's got all these extra buttons and functions, so that makes it nicer than having the D-pad Joy-Con. But even if you're just looking for a slightly nicer D-pad, this one is a little bit bigger and maybe you don't like or maybe you do like that. Personally, I felt it was actually kind of easier to use having this D-pad be a little bit bigger. I don't have any opinions on the analog sticks. I don't really play that many games that even involve analog sticks, but the main reason I was interested in this was the D-pad. Now, I'm not saying this is perfect. It, it's not perfect. This, there's actually plenty of things that could be upgraded to make this D-pad nicer, but I think for the money and what you're getting, it's a more ergonomic way to hold your Switch and it will make playing fighting games significantly more comfortable. I honestly easier, it won't make the game easier, you know what I mean? But it will make it easier to, to do the inputs and you won't be fighting against the controller. You'll just be fighting against your opponent, which is nice. Personally, I don't have any use for these paddle buttons on the back, but uh, that's because it's day one. I've only just opened out of the box, but I'm sure I'll find something cool that I can do with these. If I have any criticisms, it's that that I think it could afford to be more pro. So this is like the $50 thing. So it costs less than an official pro controller, but it's not actually that professional feeling. Like it is still plasticky and using very standard Hori D-pads and Hori analog sticks and these, these rubbery buttons that aren't super nice and, you know, membrane buttons. A lot of this stuff could be more pro and more premium. So personally, and this is just me being selfish, I would love to see like a Split Pad Pro 2. I don't know what you would call it, but just, I, I want something that's actually more pro than this. And in that, I would like to see a more responsive D-pad that was more clicky and less mushy because it does feel mushy. It, did, it gets the job done and it does the job well, but push come to shove, if I had to describe it as anything, it does still feel a little bit mushy. You know, these rubber buttons, don't want them. I want real buttons for that. These membrane buttons, like we could swap these out for more like actual micro switches, which is what they're using in the HoriPad Okta, which came out like two years later, but you know. And another thing they could change is to make these grips actual handles that actually jut out like this. So you can actually wrap your hands around these handles because unfortunately, even though you can wrap your hand around the, the grip portion, no one's fingers are so short that this is, well, like maybe maybe some kids' fingers are short enough, but personally, my fingers are, are mega long. And so if I wrap them around here, I end up just kind of not knowing to, where to put my palm. And if I put my palm in the right place, now I don't really know where to put my fingers because this is, this is not a real grip. This is just kind of grip shaped, but what I really want is an actual like pole shaped handle. Though I think what I really want, what I really, really, really want for a controller for the Switch is something that doesn't click on like the side of these Joy-Cons. What I really want is a controller that comes on like this and clicks to the bottom and over here as well, clicks to the bottom. Sorry, it's really difficult to hold this in the right place, but essentially this is what I want. Something like with the joypad here at the base and the screen at the top, like a Nintendo DS, but minus the lower screen. Don't need the lower screen. I just want my screen to be in a good position. And the reason is I think it would be easier to make a grip style like like on a, on like a pad controller like this. I think you'd have a nicer grip to hold and also you would have the Nintendo Switch actually at a good head height so you're not looking down at the screen because I'm gonna be honest, every time I play on my Nintendo Switch, my neck my neck starts to hurt and I'm just like, why can't consoles be more like the DS? They got it right the first time. Why did they move on to a design which is inferior? Don't get me wrong, I like the Switch but it is inferior. But yeah, all in all, a fantastic little product. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out other videos. I've got plenty of other videos on Hori products and other controllers. I've got plenty of other controllers that I like to use in puzzle games, fighting games, RPGs, all sorts. So do check out the other videos. If you've never seen me on Twitch, I do have a live stream as well. So the link to the Twitch channel is in the description box below. You can come and hang out on the Nihongo Gamer Discord if you want to chat about gear or Japan or anime or fighting games or just find other people to play fighting games with. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter if you haven't done so already. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.